In the news tonight, new contingencies following record 105 cases. Expect more severe cases with spike in infections and 216 patients seen at field hospital. From the studios of FBC Suba, Edwin Nunn. Fiji. The Ministry of Health is now considering support from Australia to prepare a contingency plan after the daily toll surpassed 100 cases yesterday. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says while the spike was expected, it is a cause for concern. Apanisa Wangai Randovo reports Fijians are being warned to continue following COVID safe measures as we reach a new height in infections. Following a record 105 cases yesterday, officials are looking to our Wubale partners for help. I am looking at uh, also uh, getting help from uh, our partners in Australia to come and help us uh, develop some of our contingency plans that are required in case we persistently get up to 200. So I'm already planning for that phase of uh, in case we get up to 200. Clusters that continue to climb are CWM, the Navy and the Health Ministry's incident management team. The CWM cluster, since its first two cases on the first of this month, is now sitting at 105. The same is for the Navy, which has also surpassed the 100 mark. I've been repeatedly warning the people of Fiji that we are going to see an escalation in the number of cases. Right now what you're seeing is a seven-day average. It's about close to 60 now. And that's a number that we look at. The seven-day rolling... Uh... It also suggests that uh, the numbers in the community is still increasing and that's uh, what we, I mean basically that's what we don't want. Eh? We don't want the numbers to continue to increase. New cases under investigation to determine the links have also been picked up in Grantham Road, Tadirua, Wailoko, Wainimbuko, as well as the Wilebu Housing. Apiniso Ngrandovu, FBC News. And Apunisa joins us live now. Apunisa, what is the current status of Monikoso and Nawaka as we've seen re-emergence of cases? Edwin, the Ministry of Health says at this stage they are trying to contain all the clusters, uh, also make, making sure that the virus doesn't get out of those contained spaces. Permanent Secretary for Health, Dr. James Fong, says the new COVID positive cases emerging from Nawaka in Nandi as well as Monikoso in Nasinu are linked to existing clusters. Dr. Fong says this is why they are making more targeted lockdowns in these areas. Last night, 16 cases were recorded from Nawachikuma and six from Tremline in Nawaka. And Dr. Fong says these people were already in quarantine. However, they were initially tested negative before becoming positive. Earlier this evening, the Permanent Secretary for Health has also confirmed the lifting of the Korodiri uh, lockdown in Nawaka in Nandi. However, the remaining places in Nawaka are still on lockdowns. Edwin. Naka Penisa. Fiji has not seen an increase in severe cases and deaths corresponding with a spike in cases. However, it remains a possibility. Head of Health Protection, Dr. Alicia Sahukhan, says the pandemic has affected the Colonial War Memorial Hospital's acute medical ward, which resulted in the death of five individuals. Kritika Kumar reports the acute medical ward is where the sickest are managed. Five deceased persons were admitted for severe illnesses at CWM and one patient from Lotuka Hospital died earlier. Um, had uh, six deaths that for people who tested positive for COVID-19, but they had pre-existing conditions that they were already in hospital for, that they were suffering from very severe illnesses, that in the end their doctor said that they died from these illnesses and not COVID-19. The head of health protection says Fiji is now averaging much higher numbers, but these can increase further. So we're now uh, at about um, 60 cases uh, per day, which is, if you're looking at our population, that's about 68 per million population, which is a high number. To put that in context, neither Australia nor New Zealand got to this level of cases per day. There is also an increase in community transmissions. However, the ministry is keeping up with high levels of testing. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says the seven-day average indicates the correct path they need to follow. But as of right now, the Fiji CDC lab has caught up with all the tests and now we are just doing current tests. Dr. Sahu Khan says the test positivity is increasing and has hit the threshold of 2%, which indicates that there is an influx of cases. Kritika Kumar, 
FBC News. And Kritika joins us live now. Kritika, what is the trend in testing that's emerging now? Edwin, the test positivity rate for Fiji is going up. In the early days of the second wave, we were reporting the test positivity rate as 0.2%. Currently, it stands at 2 now, this is important as uh, these, uh, st these percentages are based on the WHO threshold. Dr. Alisha Sahu Khan, who is the head of health protection, has reiterated that uh, increasing, number, increasing test positivity indicates that there is an influx of cases in the community. The ministry is testing at a high level and their current average is around 3,200 tests per day. The ministry has a broad spectrum of testing and this includes uh, cashiers, frontliners and the, positive, uh, and, the po and the primary context of the positive cases. Edwin. Thank you, Kritika. Residents of Vatualai Lai village along the Coral Coast today displayed placards and banners to raise concerns against any COVID-19 quarantine facility in their area. Police have confirmed this was not a protest and members of the community only placed signs at the bus stop and beside their stalls. Singatoka police spoke with those involved and managed to disperse them. A discussion was also held with the Turangani Koro with a decision to hold further talks tomorrow. 45 surgeries have been conducted at the FEMAT Field Hospital in Laudala Bay, Suva. Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Chemesa Tundrabu says to date more than 200 Fijians have been through the facility and 77 have been admitted since the hospital was set up earlier this month. Kelly Vadala reports. This field hospital has been able to take up the load from the CWM hospital which is now a dedicated COVID facility. So they look after, they look after adults, they look after children, all, they take up all referrals that used to be referred to CWM hospital, now go through the FEMAT uh, um, team. There's a contingent of 129 staff at the facility, including health workers and support staff. There's about 101 health staff, and then we have other support staff eh? from the military, the police, uh, fisheries, um, immigration, and rural development. Health Minister Dr. Faremi Wanganembete says adhering to COVID protocols while visiting the facility remains paramount. All the facilities that are around are supporting the work of Sintombele. The FEMAT Field Hospital is open 24 hours a day. Kelly Badala, FBC News. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says the new COVID positive cases emerging from Nawaka in Nandi and Monikoso Nasinu are from existing clusters. Dr. Fong says this is why they have more targeted lockdowns in these areas. Last night, 16 cases were from Nawachikuma and six from Chamline in Nawaka Nandi. Dr. Fong says these are people who are already in quarantine. He says they, were test they tested negative initially before becoming positive. The ministry recorded 15 cases in Monikoso. The ones in uh, Monikoso are also people that we have isolated from actual home that they were in. And uh, what, that's one of the reasons why we have now targeted our lockdown measures to specific houses rather than uh, to a whole suite of area. I mean to specific areas, sorry, rather than to the whole of Monikoso. Up ahead, don't loiter in Suva. And e-commerce grows amid pandemic. Welcome back. The Suva City Council is disappointed with people using recreational facilities in Nasese this morning for workout purposes. Special Administrator's Chair Isikeli Tikonduandua says these Fijians removed the caution tape put around the facility and the park seats. Tikonduandua adds they've replaced the caution tape with actual barriers and similar measures have been taken at other recreational areas. More than 16 people were seen working out along the seawall with no physical distancing and some were not even wearing masks. It's also believed that police officers who were on patrol chased them from the area. Meanwhile, the Suva City Council has seen some Fijians disregarding COVID-19 safe protocols while out and about in the city, especially in the market area and the bus station. As Fiji hit the 100 mark in COVID-19 cases, SCC Special Administrator's Chair Isikeli Tikonduandua is calling on people to be vigilant, responsible and law-abiding. Josiah Nanunga reports. 
Fijians who are found wandering around the capital city without a valid justification will be sent home, as the message is loud and clear. Stay home if you have no reason to be in Suba. We have been challenged with the people disregarding protocol. Uh, people that are coming to Suba without any real reason. Uh, parents still bring their children. Leave your children at home if you have to come to Suba. Come alone. The Suva City Council has been working closely with police to ensure that members of the public who are in the city for essential purposes strictly adhere to the COVID safety protocols. This has also guaranteed the safety of his enforcement officers, who are at times being vilified by Fijians. You have to take ownership and be responsible. Uh, and the Itoke youth, you know, uh, I'm Itoke and I'll just be very frank on this. Uh, there's no real respect. You know, they, they tend to think that this is a big joke. We need to be responsible, especially parents. People must come to Suba when necessary. Children must not be seen in town. This is simple steps that we can take to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Fijians who come to the market must practice and maintain safety protocols. They need to regularly sanitize their hands because this is also a risky area. The council continues to monitor some of the strictest protocols that were imposed two months ago in an effort to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Chose Yenanuga, FBC News. 52 retailers around the capital city have engaged in online shopping services. Members are intensifying online operations while ensuring that all necessary protocols are met for the delivery of products. Jeshula reports this initiative is likely to stimulate economic activity. The Suva Retailers Association members are turning to online and digital platforms to ensure customers continue to get the goods and services they want. Most of the Suva Retailers Association members are now on online, uh, on call sales. Uh, we have been given approval by Ministry of uh, Commerce, Trade, um, uh, Transport and Tourism that uh, we can operate on call basis and online. So you can go in online and check our favorite, your favorite shops uh, who are selling goods. While there is minimal contact under the new normal, people are reminded to follow all protocols. We advise you to please follow the protocols laid out by Ministry of Health and it's only uh, deliveries and pick up only. You can't go and browse into the shops and we advise uh, you to take deliveries, stay home and enjoy this new platform that we have created for our customers. We have reached out to our business stakeholders as well as consumers, uh, letting them know that we will still be operating. We have uh, deployed our business continuity plan, uh, and as such, we have decentralized our operations and will be uh, able to operate uh, from uh, our different homes. Customers are encouraged to visit their favorite stores online via Facebook, Instagram, or websites to shop. Jeshulal, FBC News. With all schools closed due to the pandemic, children are being provided alternate resources to ensure they remain engaged while on the extended break. UNICEF Pacific has been working with the Education Ministry to formulate programs so that children can continue learning. Kelly Vadala reports. These are stressful and unpredictable times for everyone, including children who have been home since April. Schools are closed for the immediate future. And schools are a place not only where children learn, but they're also a place for socialization. Sheldon Yet says children have become tech savvy and the educational programs are designed to keep them hooked. We want them to continue to go to school and to continue to, to grow up and, and contribute to, to their full potential to the growth of this country. It's time to accelerate the pace of progress. And lastly, we must revitalize partnerships Again, increase the awareness, increase the advocacy, reach out to the most vulnerable. The government, through the Education Ministry, has developed educational radio programs, animated educational television series, and a learning hub. Kelly Vadala, FBC News.
Ministry of Commerce and Trade will be conducting more awareness on COVID safe measures for businesses. Minister Fair Square says operators who have been allowed to reopen are compliant and consistent inspections are being carried out. Koya adds the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission is taking the lead in this regard. Initial feedback suggests there, there is need to be ongoing awareness for businesses and shoppers alike. More can be done and the Ministry is ready to facilitate and assist the private sector where possible to improve compliance. Uh, you know, people are, are quite quick to point out uh, something to us if there is a measure of the slightest degree of non-compliance from anybody. The awareness has actually become critical for this private sector and the general public to better understand the new, the new way of, actually, of doing these things. Here are the local exchange rates are set early this morning. The Fiji dollar did well on the currency's market, rising against our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, as well as the PNG Kina and the Euro. It weakened against the other currencies we cover. On the commodities market, crude oil rose to just over $71 a barrel. Gold fell to close at $1,867 per ounce, and silver was down at $27.92 per ounce. And we now join Sanifa from HFC Bank to give us the latest figures from the money market. With no share price movements, overall trading on our South Pacific Stock Exchange slowed down last week. The market capitalization remained unchanged in value. In the foreign exchange market, the greenback is going to be in focus this week as traders get set for the last big event before the summer period in the Federal Open Market Committee meeting midweek. The meeting will likely set the market tone for the coming weeks, but it may not be the volatility game changer that traders are hoping for. This morning, the U.S. dollar held steady against major currencies after posting its biggest weekly gain in more than a month as traders closed short positions ahead of a Federal Reserve policy meeting this week. That's all from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Profit and growth have taken a back seat during this outbreak with travel operators recording losses. Travel restrictions are a mandatory COVID safe protocol implemented to control the spread of COVID-19. Christiana Uluwai reports that operators are not complaining despite making losses. Counter Shipping Limited is amongst the operators recording losses during the second wave of COVID-19. But uh, no, we took a million dollar loss and that's a big loss for us to take. Uh even though we're a large company. With intercity travel halted, bus operators like the Sunbeam Transport Limited are temporarily switching their engines off as well. Uh, they are not operating long distance because you can't pass uh, the, the, uh, the containment areas into the container with, and then you know, changing buses are too, uh, too complex. So they, they're not uh, running uh, uh, the, the long haul trips at the moment. Although these travel operators are recording losses, containing the virus is a consideration that both industries are willing to prioritize. Christiana Uluwai, FBC News. That is the latest from my end, but coming up after the break, Fiji holds climate talks with UN. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Ministry of Disaster Management has welcomed further collaboration with the United Nations Development Program to develop climate and disaster risk financing solutions and support on climate change adaptation and resilience efforts. Minister Inia Seruiratu made this commitment during a virtual meeting with UN Assistant Secretary General and Director of the Regional Bureau for Asia and the Pacific United Nations Development Program, Kani Wignaraja. Wigna Seruiratu says Fiji and other small island de developing states are grappling with three parallel pandemics. On the health front, SIDS remain at the back end of the queue for vaccines. On the economic front, the closure of tourism sector has resulted in loss of employment and income for Fijians in the tourism and retail sector. On the environment front, he says climate change is a planetary pandemic ravaging communities and countries across Fiji and the Pacific.
More well, farmers are facing challenges in reaching markets to sell their produce. As Fiji battles against the second wave of the pandemic, 28-year-old Monica Naimoso Dengundrao has helped put together a team to boost market accessibility for a good number of farmers. Lina Reese reports. The mother of three together with other women living in urban centres were driven to assist women farmers who far too often wait for the men to sell their produce before they get their turn. Young mothers would come out, single mothers would come out to, to sell along the road and that really touched us a lot. Uh, so one way we would do that was to uh, provide transportation. So instead of them coming all the way to the urban areas or to the cities and to the towns to sell, we made sure it was easier for them to we come to their houses, to their places, to their villages and buy straight from them. Now with containment zones in place, the group of women assisting local farmers have expanded their investment base. We are really inclusive. Uh, we have a really soft heart for women with disability, men with disability. This way they have a profound uh, security. When, they, when we purchase from them, they will also have that, uh, that knowledge that we will definitely purchase every single time they would call. Monica hopes that the helping hand extended to the farmers will have a rippling effect as Fiji continues to work to contain the virus and get through the hardships that come with it. Lena Reese, FBC News. Now, COVID-19 has caused major economic shocks and small-scale roadside businesses that used to rely on motorists and passers-by are struggling. Shweta Vandana with the details. Manoj Kumar has been selling pineapples and watermelon for 13 years, but the last few months have been the hardest he's ever been through. Before, my sales were pretty good, but now during COVID-19, very less customers are coming. Kumar opens his store at 7 a.m. and ends it at 5 p.m. Despite not having enough customers, he still chooses to operate every day. I have children at home and have to think about them as well, and money is needed every day in life, so I have to operate. Manoj says that his small business has never suffered this much and he is hoping for things to get better in the near future so that the business can pick up. Shweta Vandana, FBC News. And Jamie is here now for all the latest in sports. Good evening ahead in sports. And student footballer thankful for assistance. This and more coming up. American-based rugby player Happy Sai Tawaya says returning home to join the Fijian Rua for the 2022 Super Rugby season isn't something has ruled out completely. The 28-year-old was part of the first Rua team that featured in the Australian National Rugby Championship in 2017, where he made four appearances. Fiji football continues its support for players affected by the second wave of COVID-19. Today, assisting Suva players, including young Eugenia Valentine, as, Okila, as Aquila Dama reports, the University of the South Pacific student was very grateful today after receiving $180 in food rations, which will take some of the burden off her parents. Players like Valentine rely on football as a source of income, but with all competitions halted, her opportunity to earn has been affected. Uh, my parents are probably paying my own hostels and my school stuff and um, school fees. And this, this is a great help for me because my parents have to buy my food and pay my rent. So with this, it will take me probably months to finish them, and it's a really good help from them, and my parents will be really proud. Like Valentine, national rap and Suva senior player Lysenia Raura was also assisted. Football is my source of money and livelihood. I'm very grateful because this is a major assistance for me. This initiative is part of Fiji FA's social responsibility program. Without those players, football does not exist. They are the major players in, in, in our game. Nandrunga men's and women's footballers were also assisted today. Aquila Vama, FBC Sports. The Netherlands had to wait until the 85th minute to secure a 3-2 win against a fired-up Ukraine in their Euro 2020 class this morning. Danzel Dumfries headed a superb winner as they survived the second-half comeback from Ukraine. England's Euro 2020 campaign got off to a winning start as Raheem Sterling's lone goal secured victory over Croatia at Wembley. 
Sterling netted the winner in the 57th minute following a perfect pass from man of the match Calvin Phillips. And Austria beat North Macedonia three goals to one to win its first group match at Euro 2020. Both teams were locked at one all at the breather, but Austria proved a better side of the two, scoring two goals in the second spell. Fijian internationals Mike Shivo and Wanga Blake scored a try each as the Parramatta Eels thumped the West Tigers 40-12 to in round 14 of the NRL last night. The Eels had a 14-6 to lead at the break before running riot in the second half in a match that saw three sin bins, one of which included Sivo being sent off for a high tackle. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in weird and wonderful bugs dipped in chocolate. Details after the break. Cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts in the interior of larger islands. Elsewhere, partly cloudy with isolated afternoon showers, rough seas. Cloudy conditions and brief showers marked the day for the west, eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva. More cloud cover and a few showers. In the north, no major change from other centres. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 25 knots. Winds gradually easing tomorrow. Rough seas, moderate southeast swells. High tide is at 19 past 9 tonight and with low tide at 2.52 a.m. Sunrise will be at 6.38. For tomorrow, cloudy periods with brief showers over the eastern parts in the interior of the larger islands and Wednesday will bring more of the same conditions. In Fiji and Pulse, we ask which businesses do you want to see open under COVID safe measures? And I want the gym to be open. I want the cinema to be open. And the business that I would like to open is uh, gyms and other, uh, and the cinema, and also swimming pool. Recapping our main stories, new contingencies following record 105 cases expect more severe cases with spike in infections and 216 patients seen at field hospital. For these stories and others, tune in to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question, last week we asked should those spreading misinformation about the vaccine be charged? 51% answered yes. This week's question, do you prefer online shopping during this pandemic? Visit our FPC News website to answer. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts. You can also download our FPC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Mother Manda.